Okay, so in this lecture we're going to move beyond what the previous section which was concerned with uh, what are called linear laws. So a linear law is something like this, so it'll be like y is equal to a times some multiplier, I'm going to call it ma of x plus, and the plus is important here, b times mb of x. So this is linear. What makes it linear is it's only addition and multiplication by a constant. Um, in particular, if you know some process is a linear one, but we don't know the parameters a and b, you can make measurements of y and x, apply the measure of these squares, find the best possible approximations to a and b. But not all mathematical relationships take such a form with the plus. So for example, radioactive decay, it can be shown that um, the number of particles at time t is equal to a times uh, e to the b t. And here you see, rather than addition, you have multiplication. And rather than multiplication, multiplication by a constant, you've got a power here. And as I said, in this case, n is number of particles at a time t, a is initial number of particles, and b is a constant. That's kind of the decay rate. If you want to take measurements of n at different times and plot of them, you get something like this which I suppose we could uh, do something like this. Now I suppose, now again, this line doesn't, this curve doesn't necessarily have to go through the points because the points all contain errors, but uh, I'll just do it for roughly to make things easy. But suppose you still want to measure B. How could you do that? Uh, in other words, how do you um, fit a curve when it's not in a linear form? See, if it's in this linear form, the analysis we did in the theory section uh, holds, oh, you multiply everything by ma and add up, multiply everything by mb and add up, that's simultaneous equations in a and b, which you can solve and find a and b, that analysis breaks down here. However, uh, you can transform the multiplication, which is here, into addition and the exponent or the power into multiplication uh, using logs. Okay, so we can define the log, natural log, um, base e is the inverse function of the exponential, and also you, similarly you call the exponential, I think, the anti-log. Now, what I'm gonna define, or not define, but um, I'm gonna tell you what a log is by its properties. Now, the, what I'm gonna write down, obviously it's gonna be written here. It would also be in your tables, but uh, it's gonna be written here. Uh, so log will do the following. So logs take uh, their functions, they take as input um, positive numbers. So this R plus just means positive numbers. And what it sends out are real numbers. Okay. So in a particular way, they turn multiplication into addition. They turn powers into multiplication and they send one to zero which I, i'm going to include for the crack and they're the inverse of e to the x so if you have e to the x it'll be sent back to x so this is what the natural log does um, now we're going to have to write down explicitly what this means and we'll do that over here so how does a log turn multiplication into addition how does a log turn powers into multiplication uh, it sends e to the x back to x because it's, by its definition, it's the inverse of exponential. So x is sent to e to the x, the log is the inverse sending it back. Now the 1 and the 0 I can explain. Um, multiplying by 1 does nothing in the same way that adding 0 does nothing. That's uh, the relationship here. So the thing that does this is the log function ln, and let's just write down and the first, well, this, this, and this. So the first one is that the log of x times y is equal to log of x plus log of y. So that's how logs are gonna turn, say, this multiplication here into an addition. And uh, the next thing is if you have log, now this is n times, so we'll see this in a second. So if you have log x to the power of n, or power of anything, 
that power of n is going to get turned into multiplied by n in this precise sense, n multiplied by log of x. So you might have heard this before, somehow the log brings down the power. There you go. And then the last one will be written if you have log e to the x, log ln natural log and exponential or inverses. So the natural log will get rid of the exponential and you'll just be left with x. Okay, so this kind of gives us um, possibly a way of finding out these a and b that we could use logs to write this in linear form and then do what we did in the previous section with least squares. Okay, but first thing you certainly need to be able to write these things in linear form. So um, now the all the ones that I give you, uh, it's gonna you're gonna be able to do them like a constant times x plus a constant. So that this multiplier is just going to always be one, and we're always going to ask for y m x plus c to kind of connect it uh, with a line. Okay, so the first thing you do here is you'll be asked, "Oh, I'll write it in linear form. I need to turn the multiplication into addition. What does that logs?" So you're going to take the log of both sides here. So I'm, I'm often when I've got an equation, I'm I'm writing what I'm doing to both sides underneath. So I'll do that here as well. So this gives me log of y is equal to log of a times b to the x. Now what does log do to multiplication? It turns it into addition in this specific sense. So this will be log of a times b to the x will be log of a plus log of b to the x. And what's the next thing that's going to happen? The power of x is going to get turned into multiplied by x. So instead of to the power of x, I'm going to have multiplied by x. And now you have to see that this is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. When you do a number of these examples, you'll get used to it that the a and b's are constants and just like the m's and the c's and then anything with y and x is going to be a variable so for example y is a variable so log of y is a variable if y is something that changes and you take the log of it it's something that changes if y is some data some data points log of y is going to be some data points so this is going to be your y here now i know it's a bit confusing when i say log of y is y that's probably why I want to use a big Y here and a little Y here. So this is going to be a little Y. Now, MX, I need a constant times X. Now, if B is a constant and all of these A and B is constant and X and Y are the data. So if A is a constant here, or if B is a constant, so is log of B. So this is like the MX, constant variable, constant variable. So this log of B is your constant times your variable x is x, and if a is a constant, so is log of a, so you get another constant here. Now what would be a big problem here is if you mess up these two, if you need to get used to this. So this is y is equal to a constant times a variable plus a constant. And I recommend that you write them like this. Let's do another example. y is equal to a times x to the b so again, you want to have addition, so but you've got multiplication, you want to do take the log of both sides. So I'm taking the log of both sides, I end up with log of y is equal to log of a times x to the b. As before, the multiplication gets turned into addition in this specific way. So this will turn into a sum of logs log of a plus log of x to the power of b. Then the next thing, what does logs do? It turns this power of b into multiplied by b. So you get log of a plus, instead of to the power of b, multiplied by b log of x. And now we should have it again. Now the, it, look, the, whatever the log of whatever is over here is always gonna be our y. Now we need a constant times a variable. Constant m, slope is a constant, x changes. In all these, a, a and b are constants, and the x and y are the variables. So this is 
b is a constant that's going to be your m and then log of x is your variable so if x is like 1 2 3 4 5 log of x is log of 1 log of 2 log of 3 log of 4 log of 5 on the calculator that's a variable that's your x so this is mx and if a is a constant if a is two now it, it'll be an unknown constant but it's some constant you're trying to find if a is whatever seven log of a is some specific number as well so that's a constant so you get y is equal to m x plus c okay i think we have some more of these uh this one here yeah so again you have a times the exponential and you don't want an exponential uh well don't worry but we don't worry about that yet it's the the a times that we're we don't want this multiplied we want addition we want y to mx plus c so if i want to turn this multiplication into addition i take the log of both sides so i end up then with log of y is equal to log of a times e to the bx and as we've seen a couple of times now logs turn the multiplication into addition so this is equal to log of a plus log of e to the bx now there's two ways you can run with this one is you can say okay i've got a power bx and that gets turned into a, a multiplication and then you can do log of e on your calculator um, so log of e uh, log of e now e can be in different places here i have it here log of e is a one so this is just bx times one which is just bx you can do that it's not wrong but it's easier if you can recall that log and exponential are inverses and actually like really if you don't if you don't cut this you don't know what a log is log is the inverse now it has these properties you can show that but the big story is what's log? It's the inverse of exponential. So if I do log of an exponential, it gets rid of the x. Similar story, if you have the log of something and you want to get rid of the log, you'll take the exponential out. Works the other way around as well. So this log and exponential are inverses. You're just left with bx, however you do it. And I would say that this probably makes it easier to see the mx in this case. So you get log of y equal to bx which is like your mx and then your log a is your constant y is equal to mx plus c so every time variable is equal to constant times variable plus constant and what this process does is it, it, it turns curves that aren't initially lines now not everything linear is a line like for example ax squared plus b is a parabola um, but if you're converting to y mx plus c and you plot um appropriately you turn things that are not if you do if sorry if you go for y mx plus c what you end up if you plot the y say log y versus x you get a straight line okay and if you're here's a kind of a related thing uh, this is a question for you what's this referring to if you if you can't get it or you think you get it feel free to email in okay i think that's everything we need there yeah